Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll explain how to stop Streamlit application. This application uh, will have a menu structure. Also, <clears throat> it will have um, different uh, uh, menu items uh, pointing to different Python scripts. And I'll show how you could, um, in every script, how you can split um, UI uh, related uh, rendering functionality from uh, the data model functionality. So let's uh, jump and uh, let's see the application. Uh, this application that I'll be showing today is part of the greater effort to implement ML application for document um, data extraction. And I decided to use Streamlit to implement UI for that application. I was trying, uh, before I was trying a couple of other technologies, but I came to the conclusion that with Streamlit, um, the main advantage is that you can focus on uh, actual functionality, not on the, of the complexity of the UI implementation. Yes, there are some, um, some things uh, in Streamlit maybe related to performance, uh, or uh, in case if your application will, will get popular and will have a huge number of users, then maybe you would like to uh, move to some other technology uh, to handle more concurrent users uh, and so on. But uh, I think Streamlit is uh, the, the strongest point is that it's very simple uh, for the developer to implement functionality. And in, especially in the early uh, stages when you're building your product, you should not focus, uh, you should not spend lots of your time on, on uh, UI complexity, but rather use something like Streamlit, uh, build uh, uh, UI quickly and nice UI and uh, focus on business logic. Yeah, so this application today, uh, it comes with the menu structures you see here, and uh, these are dashboards. And uh, for this UI, I'm using only Streamlit components uh, out of the box, and menu structure is implemented with open source Streamlit component called um, Option Menu. And what is great about Streamlit that is responsive um, out of the box. So if I would say, uh, I will go to try to simulate smaller screen. Uh, I go to the developer tools, right? And uh, if I change uh, to iPhone, for example, view, uh, you see that uh, all the dashboard elements where uh, layout was changed to the vertical from horizontal and charts, uh, all of them are rendered vertically. And uh, menu is hidden uh, out of the box. I can open it, select other menu option and for example, uh, data annotation, or I can go back uh, to dashboard and everything uh, works fine. And then I go back to uh, original screen size and uh, it's, uh, it's being uh, displayed correctly. And also I could go to data annotation here, go back to dashboard, uh, hide the menu, scroll, and everything works fine. So let's uh, go to the source code and explain uh, how I would recommend, based on my uh, experience, how I could recommend to start uh, with a Streamlit application structure. So first, this uh, main entry script, and uh, this main entry script that it's uh, here. I'm setting up some page configuration like a title, icon, uh, layout. Then I'm loading for the utility, utility function. I'm loading uh, helper CSS with a bit of customization for default uh, default Streamlit view. And then all the scripts uh, are structured in the same way. There's a separate class which gives um, data-specific uh, variables. And th there's a separate function, view function, which is which consumes this um, model class. <coughs> and it is responsible to uh, use Streamlit uh, components to render UI. Like in this case, on the sidebar, I'm rendering with the option menu. I'm with using option menu API. I'm constructing the menu structure. Then, <clears throat> uh, uh, for each menu item, I have um, a code place where I'm listing if currently this menu item is selected. For example, if um, data annotation menu item is selected, then I'm calling data annotation class and uh, <clears throat> executing view function from this data annotation class and rendering Streamlit UI. Uh, every time when you interact with uh, Streamlit UI, uh, the backend code that runs on the server will be executed, the script, Python script will be executed, and you'll get the latest uh, variable values uh, in code, and you could react, <clears throat> and you could build your logic around that, right? So <clears throat> every time you click on the menu, 
then menu item variable will be executed on the server side because streamnet logic runs on the server side. Uh, this is how it allows to keep it simple because uh, it all runs on Python, right? And you can control your application flow in the Python. Uh, you may think that uh, this is would be this would be overhead for the user because um, every time user clicks, then there's a request to the server and response back. Yeah, <coughs> this uh, th there could be some overhead, but I think it's uh, always the question is about the trade-off. And uh, <coughs> as I said before, if your product grows and you'll have lots of users and you'll have requirement to make it more client side, then you may uh, introduce. Uh, maybe another framework or even inside Streamlit you could uh, build uh, React components and integrate them into a Streamlit application for more client-side behavior. But I think initially you should focus and use as much as possible out-of-the-box Streamlit components and you focus on your business logic. At least this is uh, what I'm trying to do myself also. Yeah, so every time you click on the menu item, then script is re-executed, and uh, if the menu item at that point of time is equal, to, for example, to option three, then we render, we call <coughs> view rendering from the model training, for example. Okay, so if you look into the dashboard script, uh, which is mapped with the dashboard menu item, then over here, uh, we follow the same approach. We have a model class where we should keep um, all the data variables and uh, in the view function we uh, using streamlit components to render the ui <clears throat> this um, project is work in progress and i'll need to refactor it clean up a bit i should move all those uh, static values uh, here under the model class yeah and i believe when you will keep um, uh, <clears throat> data uh, functionality the data definition separate from the view rendering uh, this way, your code will be more maintainable in the future and it will be easier to maintain and change it. Yeah, so the idea is that you keep model and view separate, in, in separate blocks, basically. Then data annotation is, uh, script is not is empty, it just uh, contains this uh, default uh, skeleton structure with the same idea. We have uh, model class and view, uh, view functions are separate, separate blocks. Yeah, then this uh, utilities uh, script and the utility script uh, uh, helps to load uh, CSS uh, with a few, uh, CSS file contains few uh, tweaks that help to uh, make UI a bit nicer. Uh, in particular, we um, make uh, we reduce the height for the main container and move it a bit up. Also, the same done for the for uh, for the sidebar, so that we keep menu a, a bit up. Then we hide uh, anchor links uh, from the headers because Streamlit by default uh, adds uh, anchor on the left uh, side of each title. We hide this. Then we change uh, uh, look and feel for Streamlit uh, metric components, and also we hide um, standard. Uh, uh, streamlit hamburger, on, uh, which uh, you would find on the top right, and uh, footer is hidden as well. Yeah, so, uh, and again, if you look into the dashboard implementation, that uh, is this one. And then we look into the Python code. Um, you see how easy it is, uh, is Streamlit to implement this kind of UI with just a few lines of code. And uh, this is the main power of Streamlit. Simplicity, it helps to focus on functionality, not uh, not, not on uh, UI complexity. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, what I did, uh, I'm actually new to Streamlit, but what I did, I, I went through documentation, I went online uh, through, through the blogs, through the YouTube videos, and from various places, I got those uh, uh, so-called best practices, and I was trying to accumulate all of them into this uh, application. And going forward, I'll try to keep building uh, UI uh, on top of this application, and I'll be posting uh, new videos explaining um, uh, how you could use Streamlit um, for your own applications uh, based on my own experience. So thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye.